Hi, Jolly. Hey, Jerry. Uh, this is Lefty Ned. I called the first time. I'm not a lefty, but I like the nickname. Uh, my question is for Jerry specifically. Uh, being a former player, what was your experience with the MLBPA? Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions that the public doesn't really know about them. I kind of want to hear an insider's perspective on how they operate. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. I do remember Lefty Ned. That was a fun one. Thank you for calling back, man. Um, I was heavily involved in the PA, so I am a pro labor guy. Um, from my time in Oakland, I was a player rep moving over to D.C., I was on the executive subcommittee, which is what Scherzer's on now um, for a couple of years. I was heavily involved. I love it. It's a brotherhood. There's there's basically, I always like to say there's two jobs of the Players Association. One is making sure players are being taken care of, um, you know, from a salary standpoint. But more importantly, like when I was coming up, like when I was first, uh, 07 was my first year coming up in the A's, it was nutrition and weight room. So making sure that guys are getting, have availability to get decent food because we're at the field all the time, making sure that they're being provided with a chance to have some good nutritious food. That was a big thing Uh, and access to the weight room. And so that was a fight that we had to make where teams would have to make the visiting team available. So it's one, making sure salaries and and health and all these things are from a player's perspective are being taken care of, not just players, but coaches. Um, And then on the other side of it is to make sure that MLB doesn't mess up the game. Like it's legitimately, you know, in this new CBA, there was talk of them implementing new rules within 45 days. So they bring a new rule. The MLB commissioner's office presents a new rule to the players association, we reject it. And then the next year, if they propose it and we reject it, they can implement it in. They want our feedback because we play the games. They have no idea. So it's simple. Like you think about, here's some of the silly rules that have been suggested to us on the players association side. So they took a poll and they said, all right, we need to like, everything is making this exciting for the new generation of fans. That's the only thing they care about is numbers watching the game. And that's fine. One of the rules or the things they pulled was like, people think stolen bases are exciting. So instead of incentivizing stolen bases by paying guys more than steal bases or, you know, making it like that, they wanted to make it easier to steal bases. And so you couldn't pick to first, was without stepping off the rubber first. Okay. I was like, well, so like you-, <laughs> you think about me as a lefty, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm standing here. I pick my leg up and make like a good move. I can't do that. It's a balk. I have to step off and go. So literally anytime I would have to lift my leg, they're, they're taking off. So they, they, they do things like that. Um, the, <laughs> Like there's, there's just a bunch of like little suggestions like that, that they come up with. Um, You can't pick over twice in an AB. You can only do it once. So you got to pick your battles like things. They're like stolen bases are good. So let's what's deterring stolen bases. Let's eliminate that. So they don't think about things from a grand perspective. They're just like stolen base is good. Let's make it easy. And so baseball is like the players association are to make sure players are, are being taken care of. And things are on the up and up there. And to make sure that MLB is not messing up the game with doing stupid things to the game for no reason. So I think that's a common misconception uh, that the, the PA is only about money, which is a, it's a big deal. The, the economics of the game are a big deal, but a lot of it is rule implementation and pitch clocks and all these the, trying, to, trying to get MLB to put the netting up for to save the fans like that was a big push from us all those things so that's one of them i like the way that you uh, characterize the pa there as a sort of a brotherhood because that's you know that's really what it seems like so guys that are kind of in the same plight they have the same struggles as one another because they have the same job so i mean yeah you see like max scherzer's at the forefront here and he's battling he he's gonna make his money regardless but he's he's fighting for the guy's they changed the game. They changed the narrative for, for baseball. They decided they wanted to value younger guys more and the guys get taken advantage of in their career. So they're not paying the guys later in their career, which is fine. You know, they're, they realize that they don't like that as much. So 
now you have to fill in that gap somewhere. And they're refusing to say they want to keep the same system without changing it, even though they changed it. So I don't know. They handed it to us this last CBA. They took advantage of it and we wore it because we signed that contract and the players are like, fine, you don't want to do that. We have a CBA. We're not going to, we're not going to, we're going to work through it. And then when, when it comes back, we'll, we'll, you took advantage of it. We see it. And now let's get back to the middle. And they're refusing to move off of that same advantageous position for no reason. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, I think one thing I want to point out about Max Scherzer that I think a lot of people who are uh, reactionary are forgetting. So Max Scherzer was not always a $40 million man. Uh, the year before he won the Cy Young in Detroit, which was 2013, he had to fight tooth and nail in arbitration to get, I think, a $6 million salary. And his relationship with the Tigers was really worsened so much that when he hit free agency the next year, uh, even though they entertained some pretty good offers for him, he went straight to the Nationals because I, I think, you know, that sort of like created the mentality he has now of like wanting to be part of teams that want to spend money and stuff like that. And like, I'm not accusing the Tigers of cutting corners, but there was definitely like some nasty feelings there that lingered throughout his Cy Young season. Um, the arbitration process is kind of, <laughs> you learn quickly, having gone through it myself, you learn quickly that during arbitration, there is no feelings. There is no sentiment involved. It is strictly, it's really strange. Like I could, we could do an episode on that if you want, but you're sitting at this table with three, three panelists, three judges that are going to decide your case. And you realize that the, the job of the team is to pay you as little as they can. It's legitimately their job. There's no feelings involved. They just say, all right, we are going to pay you the least amount we can and that's the bottom line. And then you realize that it's not baseball, it's business. That's So they're going to trash you. They're going to tell you how bad you are. And it's your job to be like, well, I'm not that bad. I'm kind of this good. So, you know, it's crazy. So there's a business side. There's a whole ugly, you know, the wizard behind the curtain, you get a peek and it's different. So if you can turn off your feelings like I, I was capable of doing and just be like, all right, this is a business. This is a separate thing. I love my team. I love my teammates. I love my coaches. I even like the front office and, and everybody. This isn't about that. This is about business. And so if you look at it from those standpoint, it, it kind of taints the game a little bit, but it is, it is how the system is set up. 